I've been seeing a common question pop up in my YouTube feed and it's, is the quad cortex worth it in 2024? And I'm pretty sure what most of you are getting at is now that Neural DSP has done a few different updates, is the unit better off now than it was back when it first came out? I think there's no denying that the quad cortex is a better unit post updates, but a lot of those promised features that attract a guitarist to the unit in the first place are still not available. Now for me, a lot of those promised features didn't actually attract me to the unit in the first place, so I've never really been that upset about it. And that's a good buying tip right there. If you're going to get something, be sure you like it in its current state and not based on what you're hoping it's going to become. Anyway, to help determine whether the quad cortex is worth it or not in 2024, I thought I'd share my story of the highs Good morning, QC. and lows. It was going nowhere. I've experienced in my first year of owning the unit. It was 2023 and I had just gotten back from a European tour. The shows were good, the vibe was good, and the gear was... Well, not quite as I left it. What it usually is. I was lugging my 40 pound pedal board on planes, cars, and even a train throughout the UK and Europe. And with all that travel wear and tear, I'm sure you can guess what happened. I had a cable go down at a very inopportune time. I switched my patch and then boom, no sound. And this didn't happen once, but several times throughout the tour. You'd see me leaning over, reaching down for my cables, trying to wiggle one back to life. And yeah, if you've seen my European vlog video, then you know those clips are actually of me looking for my capo, but you get the idea. I'm tired of patch cables and I should probably just tape my capo to my body. So I returned from tour and I decided I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take the plunge. I went over to Sweetwater and I ordered a quad cortex and it came and I was honestly immediately blown away. No. If you see my channel, you know that's not true. It was not love at first sight. But I would keep at it and slowly but surely, I found myself getting more comfortable in the quad cortex and getting it closer and closer to how I wanted it to sound. At about three months in, I figured, well, I guess this is as good as it's gonna sound. It's not my pedal board, but whatever. Obviously, that was completely wrong, but I didn't know that yet. The Quad Cortex was providing me with some very good tones to use live. It was easy to pack up and take with me. But when it came to recording guitar at home, I was never reaching for it. The Quad Cortex was solely a live device. It wasn't gonna replace my tried and true pedal board rate. I made some small gains in the Quad Cortex over the next couple of months, mainly driven by this channel. For whatever reason, the YouTube algorithm was really loving my videos on the Quad Cortex. And yes, I use the term loving very loosely. But I couldn't keep posting the same thing over and over and over again. So that forced experimentation ended up being a really good thing for me because in my heart of hearts, I wasn't actually satisfied with my tone. I was happy with my amp sounds, I was happy with my drive sounds, but I wasn't fully happy with the delay and reverb sounds I had dialed in. Reverbs were definitely not on par. A lot of tweaking with the reverbs. Struggle with the reverbs? Well, one day I saw a video by Vertex FX on wet dry rigs, and I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if I could do this type of thing in the quad cortex, and if by doing that, it might solve my delay and reverb issue. So I started throwing my delays and reverbs in parallel, and I was much happier with the results. Maybe it was the fun of chasing down realistic tones in the quad cortex, the algorithm favoring my videos on the quad cortex, or just my desire to eventually sell preset products. I'm tired of looking for sounds on the quad cortex. But I felt compelled to get my QC tone to that S tier level. That's when I decided to do the thing. I sat down with the quad cortex and decided to build a rig from the ground up that was meant to be a one for one recreation of my pedal board rig. I spent hours and hours and hours A being different effects, messing around with the EQ to get the frequency response of the amps to sound more like my real amp, tweaking the settings I had for modulation, delay, reverb, so that the sounds would rival the Strymon Mobius timeline and Big Sky, the Strymon zone. It was a tedious process, but the end results were pretty stellar. The 
JM Pedal Board preset has become my top selling Quad Cortex preset and I can definitely see why. This is the first rig I built in the QC that truly felt like me. The amps responded how I wanted them to, the effects were close if not near identical, and probably best of all, because I had essentially put my pedal board rig into the Quad Cortex, I felt right at home when I was programming scenes, just like I would with my pedal board and my MIDI switcher. Now, about seven months into owning the device, I finally felt like I was losing very little if anything whenever I used the Quad Cortex over my pedal board. You know, the job is never finished, so I decided to go back to the drawing board to see if I could get the QC to just that next level of realism. So rather than using the built-in models and captures, I decided I would utilize the neural capture technology to capture my own pedals and amps. So I began the process again, and I do think that I was actually able to push the needle a little bit further into the realism category, but it's just a preference thing at the end of the day. Of course, the captures aren't perfectly identical replications, but they sure are close. And by taking a drive pedal and dialing it in based off how it sounded through the capture of my amp and then capturing that drive pedal, I finally felt like I was able to have really good control over the end product. Now that was a bunch of guitar mumbo jumbo, but I'm hoping that made sense to a few of you because that was actually a pretty good tip. And for the rest of you, I'm sorry. Anyway, capturing my own drives and my own amp paired with some tweaks in the modulation, delay, and reverb settings I had yielded some pretty fantastic results. If you weren't listening for differences between the two of these, then you probably wouldn't notice them. At this point, I felt like I kind of had the formula down. The process of dialing in and tweaking your captures so that they sound good is a little tedious, but the end results were well worth it. I actually repeated the same process again, but with some different gear so that I could recreate some 2000s alternative rock and pop punk tones. And I was pretty stoked with how they came out. since I bought the Quad Cortex and my oh my, we've come a long way. My one year verdict is that the Quad Cortex is definitely worth it in 2024, especially if you're willing to sit with it and learn the unit. And even if you're not willing to do that, you can kind of just skip the line and all the experimenting, buy some presets and be on your merry way. The user interface is top notch and I really enjoy using this touch screen. I like that you can just drag and drop things everywhere without having to go through a ton of different menus. And I also like that these knobs turn. I think that's a really nice touch. I like the tactile sensation. And while I initially found the QC to be complicated, it's definitely gonna take time to get used to it. Like I said, I couldn't even figure out how to do things I normally would do. I realized within a couple weeks, it really wasn't that complicated and that I'm just an idiot. There's a lot of good things to say about the Quad Cortex but it's 2024 and there's a ton of different options now, so how can you be sure the Quad Cortex is the one for you? Well, I can't really answer that for you, but I can say as a person who was formerly very insistent on using a pedal board and a tube amp that I've been really happy with the results I've gotten in the QC. But there's pros and cons to each unit. The Helix is probably the cheapest and it's consistently praised as being user-friendly. Now, I've never used the Helix, but I've used the HX1 and I thought those effects sounded awesome. The Kemper is kind of like Pro Tools where it's almost industry standard in a way. And you always hear good things about Axe effects. Like there's just 
Lots of great options now. But here's the real truth. You should pick the unit that best meets your needs and that you're willing to sit down with, learn, and dial in. Maybe one unit sounds a little better than the other, but at the end of the day, if you don't learn what you have, then you're not gonna be able to maximize that difference anyway. For those of you thinking about getting a quad cortex or are interested in learning more about the QC and how you use it, I've got a ton of videos on it on this channel. I think I've done a pretty good job of filming all the stuff it took me a long time to figure out in the unit, so you could probably watch like 10 of my videos and save yourself weeks or maybe even months worth of time. But anyway, that's my one year review. I'm pretty happy with the unit. I'm not looking to swap it out for anything. And yeah, I think the technology is still inspiring. I'm really into the capture stuff right now. It's also fun to make the stuff you use at home more portable, efficient, and accessible. I got links to the Quad Cortex, presets, and other gear I use in the description. Be sure to leave a like on the video before you head out and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Share it with a fellow Quad Cortex user and I'll catch you next time. The built-in <laughs> Tate. <laughs> Hi! What do you think? What do you think? You have an opinion? I guess this is as good as it's gonna <laughs> I guess this is as good as it's gonna sound. <laughs> I guess this is as good as it <laughs> I'm back.